Hello everyone, welcome to the Tech Point Africa podcast. Today on the podcast, we'll be discussing updates about the state of Binance in Nigeria. we we'll also talk about the Nigerian fintech startup that couldn't pay customers money, as it were, and blamed it on not being able to raise funds. we we'll also touch on MTN's 2023 financial statement and the reason behind the company's 177.8 billion naira loss. With me in the studio today, as usual, is Bolu and Chim Gozirim. But also joining us in the studio is a distinguished guest, Joseph Olaolua, a senior reporter from Tech Carval. We join us as we delve into all the things we have to discuss today and more. A quick update from CBN's new guidelines for BDC that we discussed last week. Over 4,000 BDC operating licenses have been revoked by the CBN. You can find that news on the website. But quickly, let's move to Binance. Two updates with Binance. Yeah. Binance was fined and then there was something else that it's looking like you can't use Binance as in Nigeria, but it seems that is false. So Bull is going to give us a rundown of that okay. before we do a few discussion on it. All right. So um, yes, like you said, two things happened. The first thing is Binance was reportedly fined ten billion naira um, because because you know, they were profiting from what um, regulators or authorities say describe as um, illegal um, transactions but i mean the person who said um, they've been balance will be fined 10 billion as uh, later come out to say um, it was just speculation and they were not actually fined by the government so that's the first thing the other thing is binance is stopping naira services and it this does not mean that um, binance will stop working in nigeria it just means that um you won't be able to use Naira on the platform. Like, there won't be anything like Naira on that platform. So, before, uh, so when it comes to using crypto platforms, right, um, there's usually two things you do. Mm -hmm. So, you want to go on ramp or you want to go off ramp. So, going on ramp simply means you want to go from fiat, right, which is Naira, into crypto, right? Or you're already into crypto and you need to go back to Naira. So, those are the two things you do. So, to go on ramp, um, you usually need to sell, like I have Nera, so I need to buy crypto, right? Mm -hmm. So before you could do that on Binance, you, there are a number of ways to do that. You could go on the platform, go to the P2P section, um, find someone who is willing to sell cryptocurrency, and then give the person Nera, your Nera, they give you cryptocurrency, and then you maybe trade or do whatever it is that you want to do. And then you want to go off again, you could do the same thing. Right, so Binance is saying, all right, so you can't do that again, right? You can't also deposit Nera because before it was possible to deposit Nera on the platform, right? You can't also deposit Nera. You can't also trade, um, do use trading pairs that has um, NGN, like Nigerian Nera. So trading pairs are like, oh, if I want to trade bit, uh, Bitcoin, for example, now, mm -hmm. so I'll search for the trading pair that has Bitcoin and probably USDT. Right, so I can buy and that means I can buy um, Bitcoin with USDT or sell Bitcoin for USDT. So now, so there are also trading pairs where there is Naira and BTC. So you can buy Naira with um, buy BTC with Naira or sell BTC for Naira. Naira. So that's what it simply means. You can't do any of that again now. So I am curious: is it mm. that it was illegal before? <laughs> or Binance is trying to punish us for what Nigeria is doing to them not like us uh, okay so <laughs> so um, that's a very interesting question so I won't say illegal right so when it comes to um, the crypto space and regulations and what is allowed and what is not allowed a lot of things are very blurry mm -hmm. right a lot of things are not clear but one thing that we are clear on is that in February 2021, the CBN said that banks should not have anything to do with cryptocurrency right. platforms. Okay. 
this now meant that because what was what happened before, right? Going back to that on ramp and off ramp, what used to happen was that if I wanted to buy a cryptocurrency, right, mm-hmm. I probably already have my card, my bank card on a crypto platform, and then I go on that crypto platform and, and tell them I want to buy um, Bitcoin worth hundred thousand naira, and then that platform can debit me, right, debit my bank, mm-hmm. and then give me crypto. That had to stop after the circular by the CBN. Yes, in 2021. So that was the... That basically gave birth to peer-to-peer. The P2P we keep talking about. When those platforms now, because they can't interact with you directly, that's okay. Let's bring Jim Rosim and Bulu together so that they can exchange by themselves. Mm -hmm. What we just do is we'll be the middleman making sure that Team Gosling doesn't suffer loss. Bully also does not suffer loss. Mm-hmm. And they will provide their scroll and all those things to make it easier. That was how P2P came to yeah. being, right? So it's not after, I mean, in December, CBN told us that. Okay, we, we now allow it. So that basically means that it wasn't illegal, right? As of December. Yes, as of December for Binance to collect Naira from you or help you trade Naira on the platform. On March 14, 2024, TechPoint Africa will be hosting a workshop for business owners, entrepreneurs, HR professionals, startup founders, and legal and compliance team from any industry. And the focus is to learn the five biggest hiring and employment mistakes that can lead to litigation, penalties, and loss of funds. You also learn how to avoid these mistakes. Taking this workshop is Startup Atoni Omoruyi Edio Gawiri. He is the lead partner at ENC Legal. Registering for this workshop will help you learn how to catch loopholes that increase the chances of litigation, teach you how to assess your workforce to know whether it is legally compliant or not, help you spot early signs of an employee that will get you into a legal trouble, and how to make proper documentations that will give you a defense during legal challenges. To register, go to www.techpoint.africa forward slash workshop forward slash the employer and book. www.techpoint.africa forward slash workshop forward slash the employer and book. Anyway, so, you know, the thing with fintech platforms or any platform is like mm. they to remove as much barrier it is mm. for you to use their platform but for this case now for nigerians to use binance is it binance or binance binance, binance, binance yeah. to use it now there's now more barrier to to using them is so what is like the implication of this okay the use of that platform in the country okay so the implications definitely means using binance now becomes harder becomes more difficult because if I wanted to trade on Binance, I could just do everything straight on Binance, put my Naira on Binance, take my crypto out, convert it to Naira, send it to my bank account. But now there's more friction. So what I would need to do now is outside of those guardrails that Binance created in P2P, right, where I could meet someone and tell that person, oh, sell me Bitcoin. Let me give you 20,000 Naira. Now I have to go out Meet somebody on WhatsApp, tell the person to give me um, Bitcoin worth 20,000 naira. And then I send them 20,000 naira and I don't get the BTC, which <laughs> now opens me up to a lot of scam. So mm-hmm. that's one thing. Um, the implications, that's an implication for um, users, right? Also an implication for Binance because, okay, before we talk about the implications for Binance, um, let's now talk about other platforms. There are other platforms that still have P2P. Right. The local so, platforms. Uh no, not local. Many of them are not local platforms. So I don't know. I don't want to start mentioning names and advertising people because I've been doing it a lot. So <laughs> um you go on those platforms, mm-hmm. there's P2P, you get your P2P. Now you have to um you get your BTC, right? Mm-hmm. You meet someone there, those platforms they provide you like a safe place to like trade. Okay. And then you get your Bitcoin. And now it now means that if you want to now trade it, you now have to take it from that platform, send this back again. To Binance and I'll trade on Binance, and then you trade on Binance. You want to turn it back to Naira, you send the crypto back to those platforms. So that friction now means that instead of me doing that, I'll just do everything on that platform. 
right? And I will not go to Binance. So Binance could actually be losing customers because of that. So it wasn't as if they even make that much money from peer to peer. I don't even think they make any money at all. But peer to peer made it easier for them to bring get customers, customers to bring do customers. all that thing. Exactly. Because you could do everything on that platform. But now that I have to start moving between platforms, it makes things easy. Mistakes could happen. I could even put a wrong address and I would lose money. So I'll just stay on that platform, trade, and but I don't know. Sorry, yeah. sorry guys <laughs> for facing Bolu because it's the crypto pressing. I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> no offense. I know it's people's money that I stay care, but yeah. does any of you trade crypto? No, really. Just a few. No, I don't trade crypto. Okay, so I'm justified. So Bolu, <laughs> how are you surviving? Um, so you really don't care about his finances. <laughs> Not only um, finance. So we are doing this because we need to do a story. I mean, talk about things that affect people's livelihood. You don't care way. about what affects Bolu's livelihood. Ne, Bolu is Maybe like don't the care about me, poster boy actual, for mm. people. Some people's livelihood. Really? And some people, yes, that's that's some people's business. You probably bring day. them here instead of Bolu. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because Bolu has beef another source of Bolu? income, right? I don't know. I don't. If you like, don't have if you like <laughs> you don't bridge. I don't. I don't but know. there's actually a consequence for Nigeria, okay. right? Because this could actually have been an opportunity for the country to generate a lot of revenue from crypto. Because, like, if you look at the crypto markets now, there's a lot of trading going on because the market is bullish, right? People are trading a lot. It's not happening. Use correct. Use the right one that layman can. No, layman understand. Wait, <laughs> <laughs> the market is okay. The market is doing great. I People want are. This one Bitcoin I did. I see you yeah. are smiling, Bolu. Oh, no, <laughs> uh, no uh, <laughs> let's not go there. So <laughs> let's not go there. <laughs> so I mean, more trades. Binance could actually have been making a lot of more money now because. Mm-hmm. A lot of people want to trade, want to make money, not miss out on this. The volume of people. Yes, right. So it will have been an opportunity for the government to like, oh, there's so much money. Like, okay, tax them or do yeah, whatever. But, but, but the CPN governor said mm. last week that this money are unaccounted for. Binance is a centralized exchange, which means people do KYC. Right, very stringent KYC. If you think about it, try and open a, a Binance account now and see how difficult it will be. It's almost it's more difficult than open Ope. That's mm-hmm. how hard it is. They have KYC. It's not the collection. They have so it is not as if you can if you work with them, you can identify you can regulate them, identify okay which money is going where, who is doing what, how much are they transacting, right? You can easily get this information from them. It's also blockchain. Blockchain is free for anybody to... You can collect my wallet address and you can see everything I'm doing. You can see everything. You can basically see everything Binance is doing on the blockchain, right? So I just think um, whatever is going on between CBA and Nigeria and the crypto um, space right now, they should fix up. up. There needs to be a lot of communication going on. And I, I mean, I just... I think, there are, for the best. I think there are yeah. two things to note about like what's happening mm. like in the crypto space. This is the second time Nico, CBN, the same CBN now, it's the same CBN in 2021 that you know, tried to restrict crypto. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The same CBN tried to give some regulations, I think last, um, as the month, as the year was coming to an end, 2023. Yeah. And the same CBN now in less than how many months. So in less than, in four years or in, in space of four years, twice, CBN has tried to restrict crypto. That's on one hand. The other other hand is that the problem that we are having with dollar inflows is not the is not like Binance. Pro, there's not Binance. Fault. Binance is not the like, enemy. They are not the reason why we are not having as much dollar inflows. Already, the, the situation is is a supply problem, and like all the situations are combined together. Like there are microeconomic con- um, problems. There's inflation that is already at like mm-hmm. a three decade uh, there's a currency devaluation that is seventy percent and then there's Nigeria as a whole I mean we are not producing anything. So I mean <laughs> what is going to bring in those yeah, dollars? The foreign exchange. Uh, no foreign exchange and Nigeria is not doing so well to bolster its foreign exchange. Mm. So I mean trying to restrict cryptocurrency maybe some people might think that maybe it's an avenue for free dollars maybe because of the fact that market is doing well mm. but trying to restrict that aspect does not 
does is not like the only solution. Even what the CBN governor is doing, trying to fight a fiscal a monetary bat a monetary battle on this monetary side, hoping that the fiscal and he said it mm-hmm. in the in the CBN MPC <laughs> meeting. It's, it's like I, they're, I doing, they're doing they're doing this to do make sure that the fiscal side can quickly react, which is mm-hmm. insecurities in the country country people cannot farm yeah. to yeah. produce food that we mm-hmm. need to eat to there's fight no the inflation. Power. And, and there's energy issues. There's yeah. also the fact that we, the production is low because if even the basic farming cannot happen, then you can imagine how much will happen in manufacturing. If energy is already high, you can imagine situation. how many companies are shut down because they cannot produce power to power manufacturing. And you know, if dollar yes, bro. <laughs> has devalued, <laughs> you, you can imagine how much yes. people are using to import raw materials because that does not even produce raw materials. So these are some of the problems that yeah. the government should be thinking about rather than promising ten million dollars in flow. And kidnapping people. <laughs> or rather than <laughs> I've ducked trying to you know arrest. Well, it is, it so the thing is, dogs. when you think about it, it bananas looks like a low hanging fruit, as we call oh, it. Fruit, call it. It's criminal behavior. Uh, bananas that is going through it right now. <laughs> I think they'll give you ten billion. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, uh, we just hope that it gets to a time where things like this, like allowing crypto to have it play, it's like it's yet to stay. Whether but, you yes, there's nothing you can do so about it. Find a way Once a, the, the young a, the young pop population in a country have had embraced something to get it out of their hand it's going to take a long time if ever it will happen and get it out, so, out of my own hand yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bolu speaking for Pity other you. crypto yeah, enthusiasts last, last out week you are trying to commit yourself. they will pick you up <laughs> <laughs> so um, we're talking about still talking about money a Nigerian fintech startup which is like a bank a digital bank for a small businesses has not for for a few months now has not been able to release customers funds that were deposited in on the platform and um news came to fall this week that the reason behind it is because the startup couldn't raise fund now it created a lot of conversation earlier in the week and i'm like what's the big deal What's the big deal? I know, I know it shouldn't be the ideal that a bank is not allowing is is not allowing you to take your money. But what's like the specific like um uniqueness to this particular case? So Joseph. Well, um I mean I mean the brass situation is is tricky and it's it's worrisome. Okay. Um it's this is a this is a, a, a fintech that offers business banking services to small um, businesses. Young businesses, and so what it means is one, it's holding deposits of, based on the story, around eighty businesses. Businesses. Um, so let's let's just imagine that one business out of the eighty has say ten employees, or maybe more. So that's compounding it. That's one. So it says that. They're having withdrawal delays because of a funding environment. That's also very, very worrisome because as a bank, one of the major functions is the deposits, right? The money that is being deposited into that bank are customers that are business owned. Like it's not the bank's money. Money. <laughs> and we know mm. that sometimes banks maybe as their normal function you know, give out loans, yeah. uh do some treasury no, those do some things. Is this C R R that they call it? Um cash reserve ratio. Cash reserve ratio. Yeah, so they, they do some businesses with the money, so we hardly increase how much, you know, they can earn you get. And then some of them might say, Okay, do you know what for the for that they are banking with us, um, maybe tra- charge some fees, mm-hmm. electronic fees and all kind of fees. So we are, so But so, for every so, time the customers need their money. They should be able to have exactly. access so to it. So you can charge your fees, you can do the loan options and all of those other things. But I mean, every time that I need money, I should be able to get the money back. And then these are 80 businesses that are hanging on the thread. And then the the reasonable excuse that is given by the CEO of Brazil is that you know there's a funding, there's a funding um winter. It doesn't relate to the, to the problem. Yeah. But I, Aside from the fact that that's happening, mm-hmm. there's also a customer care issue whereby people that are, are trying to get their money cannot even reach the customer care. 
and this is a fintech that is without borders so you I may not know where the office is, <laughs> and so people are hel- held in a limbo. And, and why that's happening like that. as well, then you now have staff cuts. The company announces that it's going to cut staff. No, we don't know how many it's going to cut. So, I mean, this is a quagmire in three dimensions. A pitiable piece, small piece. No? And it's, it's, worris- <laughs> it's worrisome because, you know, it highlights that this is a problem beyond just... I mean, you have staff cuts, you have customer care issues, you can't give customers their money. This is a similar situation we have seen before in the fintech um, landscape, showing how difficult it is to do business. One of the most important things about Bratz is that it shows, if you look at the conversation, it shows how difficult it is to do business as a fintech. I mean, in Nigeria. If, you, if you look at some of the explanations that the CEO gives, it says that, oh, you need to raise money. Why, is, why that excuse is worrisome? Um, people might not believe that because they have right not to believe that. Mm-hmm. The other part is that they also says that to actually run a fintech is capital intensive in yes. a way. Mm-hmm. So these are some of the takeaways from like what that story like highlights. So as well. um, just like in the previous month where we've been like talking about layoffs and shutdowns, um, some startups have come to say that they had to shut down because they couldn't raise their next round. And um, so, w- w- would we be saying that um, in this particular case of brass, I, I, s- why I'm asking this is that I need to understand why it stands out. Would you say, okay, let's say the operational expenses for a startup, like the startup has to run and it needs money to operate and mistakenly went to take customers' money <laughs> to do operation <laughs> and at the time the customers need it. It was not available. It was not available. What is like the implication to that? Like, okay, say we can't run. Okay, let's say we are, we cannot run to the optimal. Should we just say customers come and take your money? It's as if I don't I don't understand where we are going to right now. Let's try to find our footing. Probably raise fund. Then we get back in position. Or what will have been the best move in this situation for brass? Tim Gazim, you. Okay, I'm trying to understand the question. Um, but maybe what I understand is what should they have done when they were struggling. Okay, so first of all, I think they were from all the issues they're having, which is um, following staff, um, having t- difficulties with um, customer withdrawals. Points to two things. One is that you're not making enough money. Two, you're not having difficulty with customer withdrawal, like it's a tech issue. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like I, there's I no money that. to so give they them are, because that is the way not, it is. Customers yes. are not able to access their funds. Okay. So, two problems here. One, you're not making enough money, mm-hmm. which suggests that you are actually... Okay, so maybe your business model hasn't yet... It hasn't gotten to the scale where without you raising external funding... Can survive. You, you can survive. So, I think Brass supports about... it. I can't remember the exact number. Is that 300 or 3,000 businesses? Um, so, what you're probably doing for them... I know they have quite a number of products. They have a payroll feature, which I don't know how much that has taken off, considering that... There are really large players in this space. Mm-hmm. But the problem with fintech is you often have to, if you're not giving out loans, you often have to make your margin, like, okay, so you're taking out, okay, maybe 1%, 0.5% or something like that mm-hmm. um, of each transaction each that transaction is, is made. Yeah. A business is not, is unlikely to make as many transactions as an average individual. I'm not paying for Uber every day. So mm-hmm. um, I probably make a few large transactions in a month and that's it. Yeah. So maybe the, I think one problem is that they were not making enough money, which is not, a, it's not a new problem. The, or yes, it's, yes. it's not a big deal really mm-hmm. because anybody can be in that situation. Mm-hmm. But where the problem now is I have made the deposit and to the best of my knowledge, Brass is sort of regulated. They acquired the microfinance um, bank um, and, license. Um, yeah. Um, I, no, I, I think no, they acquired okay, the bank. Okay. bank to, yeah, so to get the license. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you are regulated. And there's a reason why you can go to your bank almost any time and ask for your money. Yeah, and they don't give you. You can start that deal, please, yeah. even if it's too key. Well, you can not share security to bond you. <laughs> but yes, there's a reason why you have that confidence. I go into the bank, I'll get my money back. You may mm-hmm. not know it, but your banks are insured or your deposits are insured. Mm-hmm. Now... My hope is that the customer deposits were insured, which means that to a very large extent, Brass should be able to fulfill every customer request 
for withdrawal. Because all these customers did not come to you at the same time. They couldn't have possibly come for you yeah, at I think the same time. They've been having issues like November or so. Yes. So they couldn't have possibly come to you at the same time. It's it's virtually impossible mm-hmm. for all your customers. Except there's something in the environment that makes... Or they are planning a blank bank run. Yeah. And uh, unlike Silicon Valley Bank where we saw people give instructions basically telling people to go withdraw their money. We did not hear any yes. any instruction of, of yeah. that sort. So you cannot tell me that they came at, they the, same came at the same time. Which now points to a problem in how you're managing your funds. Mm. Um I'm not a banker, but I believe that if I'm if I'm if I'm serving businesses with technology, I should be able to see when they move the mo- when they move certain amounts of money mm-hmm. the most. I should know that okay, between the twenty fourth and the thirtieth mm-hmm. or maybe thirty first or a if lot you're of some people transact. Yeah. You are going to be paying staff salaries. Mm-hmm. I should also be able to know that okay, maybe I have a lot of supply chain guys. So at least every two weeks or so, or maybe even every six weeks, they they're making money. very large transactions, transactions to suppliers. Mm-hmm. I should also be able to know from this data that okay, there's a certain threshold that my money can never go below. Yes. Because you have money for operations. Yes. Because of customer deposits. I think the problem here is either they were unaware of how to run a banking institution because, let's face it, this is a bank. The and startup is like four years. Yeah, think about that. You, you, Either you did not know how to run a bank or you made some mistakes somewhere. Or That's oversight. Just, or an oversight. That's just... Or um, maybe a raise was in the offing and it was so close. Not not I understand. I don't know I'm the not, last time. I'm not no, making no, a case. I don't case. know the last time that... I'm sorry, not making I'm, I'm a good, case. No. Yeah, yeah, I know you're not making a case, but you should not. You're a deposit taking institution. You should never say or you, no. You should never hinge your abilities to fulfill your um, responsibility to your customers on a raise. You're not the you're not a payment uh, facilitator. Yeah. If you're a payment facilitator, I can say okay, no wahala. Um, you 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 what the one point five percent you're making isn't enough. Customers are not exactly depositing money with you. Mm-hmm. It's just, I collect money from this person, I give it to this person. Yeah. Um, I don't know, Everything. plus or minus three days, I collect money from here, I give it to this person. In a few days, if you're a very terrible payment <laughs> provider, um, maybe one week, the money has <laughs> left your account. But yeah. this one, someone is giving you money. When they're saving with you. So what, yeah. what, there are a few things that banks do. Either they are investing in treasury bills or investing in some kind of instrument that gives them, what are you doing? So that maybe I should be asking: Do they have a CFO, for example? Because this, I mean, yeah. do you That's have a, a CFO question. who was handling your treasury management to ensure that you're not? Because let's face it, you don't have any excuse really to be in that kind of situation. Situation. You don't have an excuse. There's one question we also need to ask, right? So and so it's really yes, please. So, um, what and the question is: Was is it possible that brass can survive this. I'm asking because one, it's a business that has to do with a lot of trust. And I'm sure that by now most of the customers Yes, a lot of people not want to trust to especially and my own trust, I won't even trust that company again because if you tell me that it's my money you're doing bro. Yes, because if house. I'm depositing money with you and you're telling me the reason why I can't collect my money is because you're not able to raise I I don't think I want anything to do with you ever again. So is it possible that the price it. comes out? Uh, 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 like, are we, is, so is there a short poss- down coming? Possibly. Because immediately possibly. you can assess your money. What's the next thing you want to do? Sorry. Um, maybe I should help them here. From the one, mm-hmm. make your tech 40 for the next three months. I'm sorry, if your money is here, <laughs> I'm just giving bad advice. Don't take me serious. Make your tech 40 for the next three months so that people are enjoying their money uh, in, in batches. Maybe in that time, you repair your reputation. I don't know how long it would take. It's messy it like, like, worse. As like long as I can't... Tell them they were able to get their money in five years. Yeah, no, no. You convert <laughs> it to, to brass tokens. I, I did that guy call it... If we stop this joke. So, <laughs> I don't know. That, Seriously, that's a love this, joke. You, this, can this, convert, this, this. you can convert their money to brass tokens. I'm not giving you financial life. If you like this... <laughs> nobody should go and say that you are giving them advice. But... You can cover their money. But really, um, can they survive it? It's possible. Mm. The major problem with banks is that, yes, they deal, in, they deal with our money, but the, I think the only currency that they have is just trust. trust. So if you've lost that trust, it's difficult. 
But it's not yeah. impossible. But it's not impossible. Yes. So maybe what you do, do, do a town hall. Like, and invite. You know somebody <laughs> that did town hall and nothing has come out of that town hall today. Names shall not be called, but you will know them. Somebody did town hall. Seven. Th- sorry. Multiple. Th- multiple town halls <laughs> that you could not see nothing from till today. But anyway, um, I think they can they can fix their this reputation. Their reputation. Um, if you if you maybe st- let's say um, well the story is that they could raise some money in the next few weeks. So if you tell your if you properly communicate to your customers, okay, this won't happen again. It's yes, happen again. maybe even if your CEO has to like go on his personal call with all the eighty businesses, businesses and say, look, you have shared for up. We would forgive fix us. It. Forgive us, even if you ask to kneel down, because really, banks. This yes, banks this is will this is why them. our parents would never want to put big money in fintech, in fintech well, because that is the claim they make. Like I know that these banks, there's nowhere they want to run to. Yes, I think this is a masterclass in communication. I think what Brass mm-hmm. missed was a masterclass of communication. To just add some context, maybe some people actually forgot last year. Around June, I think Tech About published it as well. Um, Heritage Bank had yeah. issues with um, funding. Um, it's granting this kind of request to Heritage Bank was having issues with customers withdrawals. Mm-hmm. And at that time, people were worried. Like people were, were very worried because like some people had gone to the bank to start staging protests. It was actually that bad. People were going to more or less take out their money out. Like people were, were people were complaining. Because uh, I got some personal complaints because I was actually aware of the situation and I was also doing some stories about that. And what the bank really did was it came out and began to issue its customer care, began to work like much more eff- effectively, issued a few statements. And at the time, and if I re- remind us, what they said was that someone stole 49 million from Merited Bank, right? And that was all over the news everywhere. And then for some reason, the bank began to allow people to. We draw. Yeah, we draw their money, but then was also countering it to some communication, like make, making public communications, making this. And after some time, everything, just everything began to subside. Everything and quelled, and people now use heritage. You understand? So it, I, I think and, for brass, and I think heritage bank has a green. So brass also has green. <laughs> I didn't good. I didn't think that deep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, so I, I think this is all, then, it's always a communication thing, right? And it's anything you are bringing, taking to, you need to be able to open up and communicate with different Even companies. Text, the, the, anything you are doing, businesses have been in situations, not very terrible situations, and they were able to talk their way out of it. Like, mm. Even after fixing it, I'm not. I'm not talking about the ones that talk their way out of it and still did not fix it. They were able to talk their way out of it and still fix it. Well, so um, we hope that um, Brass is able to fix this and um, the company survives this challenging period. We move it's from there to, to to the last story we'll be discussing today because we spend a lot of time, and this is about a big company. We've been talking about startups and crypto and disruption and all. MTN Nigeria recorded its first loss, its first loss in um, six years um, in its 2023 financial statement. It says uh, there was a 177.8 billion loss um, in FX, FX loss, right? And um, I'm wondering what is responsible for this loss to start with? It's a big company like, this is not your first rodeo you know what's going on well to be to be Honestly. fair i think that like this is um mtn is just mtn is like it was coming literally it was coming and then it just happened so i don't think that it, it's 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 a, it's a problem of the environment and i'll explain if you look at the nine month results for mtn mtn had a profit dip of 45 percent and when you, when you look at that nine month result it tells you that we had inflation concerns we had um currency devaluation and but then they were able to come off with you know not a loss, a profit decline of 45 percent. But now, um, in the end of full year, they're not having like okay. a serious loss, and it's from the same thing with forex locks. And the major part of the forex loss is the tower cost. According to them, says um, the, the the loss they are financing the towers, they are paying for the towers um, in, in dollars, in right? Dollars. And it's 45 to 50 percent of like they're making money in Naira. Yeah. So it's so and. They also explained that you know when they costed their financial results at 2023, it was at it was 900. I mean, do, the dollar to naira was around 900. Um, 
to one and then now it has become like 1000 Seven yeah and, and and so th- and they, they keep explaining that the more the dollar continues to the more the devaluation right. continues to happen already at 70 percent of devaluation the more they continue to you know, lose money. lose money and then what makes it worse again i mean mt has issues with tower cost that's atc and ihs um tower and yeah. um, disputes but then it's unfortunate that those tower disputes uh, paying those tower costs are in dollars and it's a business that operates in naira in nigeria mm-hmm. I mean, on one hand, on, and then that affects many things. There's energy cost issue. Don't There's no, I mean, diesel is already diesel is already expensive, and powering a tower, you're using, we're guessing, diesel, diesel most likely to power the tower. And you know, M10 is probably one of the networks that have one of the largest coverage in Nigeria. Yeah. Everywhere it's, you go, it's gone so far. Things. So for every time that power goes out, yeah, diesel sure. comes on. You know, running that cost as well as inflation. As well as inflation, and maybe that's why people complain that their tar- tariffs, you know, are, gone, are, are, are not lasting. So these are these are some like factors around it, and then people that bear the brunt um, is their shareholders who lose all. It's completely wiped out because the forex loss is around four now, seven and forty billion, and it wipes out um, shareholders um, um, funds, so they don't get to pay final dividend for this year. So if you uh, you have an MTN stock, so their AGM you, could just you're, dry. You're expecting. You just call for AGM like this. You just be like, nothing to show. It's just update. It's just update. Oh, this year we did this, we did that. I I think we should just move on from the loss and just talk about a few things that went well for MTN in 2023 as reviewed by their financial statements. Was there? There are a few good things. I mean, um, mobile subscribers have been growing for MTN. I mean, over like 2023 and they are now close to 80 million. I mean, they had some 9.7 million sub, um, mobile subscribers. Um, Momo wallet increased um, 163% to 5.3 million. I dispute that fact because... Um, Who's using Momo? Um, like, is that, that's the question I asked last year when I was doing a story on Momo, wondering who, who I'm able to use it actively. But then they said that it grew and you know, FinTech revenue grew. But I mean, what's important about the announcement is that they said they were going to move into cloud IoT and unified communications. That's in addition to their 4G and 5G businesses. Interesting. So, they already said they're a tech company. So <laughs> like we are looking forward to like what's cloud, you know, what they're looking I mean if you say cloud, I mean in this Zoho and cloud issues that we have, I mean that will not be bad if MTN is provided. People will be clamoring for to an African uh, stock doing yes, data a, 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 a yes. AWS competitor. So, so those are good things to look at. Nice. So, yeah, so they're actually very good. They could be in a good position to be that. Hopefully, so w- we are looking forward to what MTN would do in this year. Third, first quarter is it's almost over, mm-hmm. right? So, but we, we look out for um, how they are able to diversify their venue channels. Now it sounded <laughs> like a startup move, so but startup to diversify. Move, uh, be, <laughs> to sounded diver- like motivation has become move. Have seven streams of income. <laughs> they will find their their revenue um channels and um probably not experience a loss in um this year. So that that has been it for us today in the studio. We've had a great conversation. You are free to add. In fact, we welcome you to add to this conversation we've had. You can send us an email at podcast at techpoint.africa or drop your comments on any of our social media channel to contribute to any of the points we've made. If you think we made any mistake at any point, please drop your reservation. We will welcome them. Respectfully, please. As Jim Gozim said. So, um, your reservations, your contribution, your feedback are welcome. Please don't forget to share this podcast with your friends, foes, and anybody family. and family, anybody you know is interested in the roundup of tech news in Africa. Although today we discuss Nigeria mostly, but yes, you get what I'm trying to say. And if you want to listen to us on any of our audio platform, where d- can they find us? Bulu? Yes, uh, for our audio listeners, or you want to find us on our audio platforms, you can always find us on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Hyatt Radio, or anywhere else you get your podcast. Yes, that is it. Bulu always comes true. <coughs> Sure, sure, sure. Thank you for joining us once again today on the Tech Metal Club Podcast. Thank you, Joseph, for joining us. It was lovely having you here. Thank Thanks you. for 
been great and Volu and Chingo so that I did not say I did not thank you. Thank you for joining me. Oh, you're welcome. And Oluani Femi, thank you for joining us today. Don't forget to subscribe to our newsletters, Tech Point Digest. We have the we have the mo uh, Modern Workplace newsletter. We have Equity Merchants. Don't forget to subscribe to keep up with all the happenings in different industries. And you can also go to the, to our website, techpoint.africa, to catch up with all the news we did not talk about today because we have a lot of them. I need to keep up with them. So go to techpoint.africa to keep up with tech news in Africa. Catch you next week and stay safe. Bye-bye.